Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to revisit this story. The story that made headline yesterday. In this story, it says, Uhuru Insider spills the beans on Ruto and Raila. And why do you think this story made the headline? Because this story is about Mutaingun. Let me just read for you some part here. Mutaingunye was Uru Kenyatta's confidant during the intense August 2022 election campaign. It proceeds. But days after shifting loyalty this week, he reveals why Azimio lost the polls. So listen to that. Mutaingunye reveals why Azimio lost the polls. And it goes ahead to say, Intrigues of disorganized deep state. So Mutai Nguni is giving you stories about a disorganized deep state. And it goes ahead to say, and this interested president, that Uru Kenyatta was not really interested in Ray Lodinga's campaign. And it goes ahead to say, the freezing of his bank account. Mutai Nguni is actually telling you that anybody who tried to support Ruto, because at the moment he's saying this, he was alleging that at some point he told Uhuru to support Ruto, but he was dismissed. So his accounts were frozen, and it goes ahead, the story goes ahead to say, a recent candid phone call with Ruto. Ladies and gentlemen, I have bad news for Azimio. After going through this story and thinking about it overnight, I'm coming to the conclusion that William Samoyara Raproto, the president of the Republic of Kenya, has already assigned Mutai Nguni some dirty work to do. And Mutai Nguni is already executing those dirty work. And this is part of the dirty work which Mutai Nguni is executing on behalf of William Samoyara Pluto. And indeed, the alleged disownment of uh, Mutai Nguni by close associates of William Ruto is probably out of ignorance. They don't know that Mutai Nguni is already working for William Samoy Araproto. So in this video, I want to reveal to you the dirty work which Mutai Nguni is already executing on behalf and for William Samoy Araproto. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us dive in. And I want to be very, very brief and straight to the point. The first role which Mutai Nguni is executing is to legitimize Ruto's presidency. The truth of the matter is that Ray Dinga is insisting that he won the presidency. But Mutai Nguni, who, is, who was uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's close associate, technical advisor, is telling you guys that indeed Ray Dinga lost the elections and is giving you the reasons why Ray Dinga lost. Now we are talking of a technical guy. Remember, Uhuru Kenyatta's close associates, all of them, or, or let me say most of them have already left him. And now they are telling you guys that Raila lost. And he lost not because of anything, but he lost because there was a disorganized team, because there is uh, the deep state there, which was not interested. Uru Kenyatta did not take even Raila Odinga to the mountain. So basically, from uh, what I'm getting, this headline was about telling Kenyans that Raila Odinga actually lost the election. And therefore, one of the demands which Raila Odinga is putting before the bipartisan team is not really necessary. So that's the first task Mutai Nguni is executing. And I'm sure moving forward, you will see Mutai Nguni revealing deeper details or deeper information why he believes that Raila lost. And just like I keep on telling you guys, in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. There is no way Mutai Nguni would have started this story at this critical moment when there's already talks between Azimio and Kenya Kwanza. So Azimio Lamoja, one Kenya lands, should know that Mutai Nguni has left. Mutai Nguni has left with the secrets and that Mutai Nguni is going 
to deconstruct them. So that's number one. Number two, the second thing which is also coming out clearly is that Mutenguni has been also tasked with the responsibility of isolating Uhuru Kenyatta further. The truth of the matter is that politics is generally a perceptional game. The fact that Uhuru Kenyatta's close associates are leaving him means that something is wrong with him. So the question would be, why would Uhuru Kenyatta's close associates, for example, why would Sabina Chaigo follow the people? Leave Uhuru Kenyatta. Why would Kalimi Kega leave Uhuru Kenyatta? This is a man Uhuru would send in some funerals with some of his contribution. Why would he do that? So the perception which is going to be created and which Mutaingunyi is creating clearly is that Uhuru Kenyatta is on his own. Uhuru Kenyatta is being isolated. That is the fact. So you target his very close associates and let them leave Uhuru Kenyatta. So Uhuru Kenyatta will remain as Uhuru Mugai, son of Jomo, without any of his key allies. For example, when, uh, when uh, Kenneth Matiba, I think that must have been after the 1992 election, told his supporters not to vote, majority of them never turned up to vote. At least there are people you could count that these individuals stuck with Matiba, they refused to participate in the elections, they refused to go to the polls, and they threw their IDs. That cannot be said of those who are perceived to be close associates of Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta. So for me, Mutai Nguni is being used to isolate Uhuru Kenyatta further. The other task, that task which Mutai Nguni has been assigned, if you ask me, is to try and portray Uhuru Kenyatta as someone who is out to protect his own family business. Mutai Nguni is, uh, is saying in that interview that for him, he had advised Uhuru Kenyatta to retire. But based on what he's seeing, Uhuru Kenyatta is not going to retire because he wants to protect his family business. So basically he's telling uh, Kenyans that Uhuru as an individual is not interested in their plight. Uhuru is only interested in their businesses. And for, for example, I'm, I'm failing to understand how that's possible. Because if Uhuru Kenyatta wanted to protect his business interest and those of the family, the easiest route would have been after the election, support Ruto's government, dump Raila. Today, Uhuru Kenyatta would be very influential, for example, in Kenya Kwanza government. I'm 100% sure. William Ruto would have given him the respect he needs because, for example, Azimio would be giving him problem, but he would have a former president supporting him. Uhuru would be playing some key role internationally. Remember, the roles he's playing today, he started before he retired. And... Uh, and for me, regarding, I mean, not regarding really, Mutai Nguni is out to portray Uhuru Kenyatta as someone who is just out to protect the interest of their business. <laughs> Number four, the other that work is supposed to, is doing, is to try and divert the attention of the Republic of Kenya from the police brutality. Let's face it. There were serious police brutalities during Azimio protest. And it has been making headlines all through. Then Mutai Nguni comes, that is defecting to Ruto's camp. Then he comes, it makes the headline in the Daily Nation. If you go look, go the star, the standard, it also made headline. Then the entire country is now discussing something about Mutai Nguni. And Mutai Nguni is actually going ahead and confirming to everybody who cares that for him, it's about business. It's a gun for hire. So for me, the intention and the timing of Mutai Nguni's moves were actually intended to try and divert the attention of the country from the discussion about police brutality. Remember, the, the Inspector General of Police had actually goofed up big time. So the government really needed something to defuse that goof. Mutai Nguni came handy for them. In fact, I'm surprised that even people like, like uh, Dennis Itumbi could not understand what Mutai Nguni was actually doing. And lastly, it could also be a strategy 
to rally Mount Kenya again to Kenya Kwanza government. The truth of the matter is that it had reached a point in this country where William Ruto had started losing the grip of the mountain. Those are facts. Those are not fix fiction. He had started losing grip of the mountain because of the high cost of living, because of uh, the state of economy. Remember the Nyamakima traders going for, for the strike. Remember the, the promises which he had made. So William Ruto was told by the intelligence that he was doing so badly. So William Ruto needed a strategy of going back to his stronghold. By Mutaingunyi coming out, leaving Uru Kenyatta exposed, then it means the message which is being sent to the mountain is that the mountain is now fully behind William Ruto. And that's why Mutaingunyi, in his statement, alleged, if you listen to him closely, Mutaingunyi alleged that uh, He's going back to where his people are. And that is only Uhuru Kenyatta who actually defected from Jubilee. Not the other way. So I don't know what you think, but that's my take. Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear your thoughts. And until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Let me know two things. The first thing I've done in this video is that I've changed the audio. You can see a new mic here. So let me know the quality. Number two, I've also changed my camera. So please, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your perception about the camera and the audio quality before i proceed with the next video until next time this is lee mcqueen bye bye